Hello, my name is Chelsea and I've lost 40 pounds on a plant-based diet. One of the things that has helped me most is having a very simple and efficient cooking, prepping in the kitchen system so that I don't get tempted to go through the drive-thru every night. So in this video, I want to share with you the top 10 hacks that I use to get in and out of my kitchen quickly. And if you stay to number eight, I'm also going to show you some practical ways that I save time on my cleanup as well, which is a big part of this. Number one is to choose a meal that actually doesn't take long to cook. This is the most important first step and everything else hinges on it. Because if you choose something that is inherently going to take an hour or two hours of cooking and cleaning and prepping, then there's nothing in terms of efficiency that is going to actually speed up that process. I think it's really important to get clear on how long things actually take because we're in this modality now where we watch 30 second reels we see someone prepping an amazing meal and we think oh yeah that looks that looks easy enough but there's actually hours of prepping involved and it's taken down to 30 seconds when you're thinking about how much time is something going to take you need to think about what are the different components involved in it so lasagna is going to take a long time because you've got to cook up your sauce you've got to make a bechamel you've got to assemble it and then you've also got to cook it in the oven anytime you turn on your oven you're adding about an hour of cook time to a meal because you've got to wait for the oven to heat up and then you're going to having to wait for whatever it is to cook in there the more bowls and components and pans that you have the longer it's going to take to make that any kind of meal where you have a lot of components even just a salad that then you have to make a dressing and then you are going to make some other side element to that that's going to take a lot longer than a single pot meal Let's watch a 30 second reel together and actually count how many components there are in it. I should have made a series out of this because I'm bringing you another dish on yogurt. And shock horror, it's crispy smash. I mean, this looks amazing. Potatoes, which, as you've probably gathered by now, I'm very obsessed with. We've got boiling potatoes. Before that, we had washing potatoes. Now we're getting a tray. We're getting a cup to smash them down. Capers and chili, perfectly We're roasting them in the oven. We're getting another bowl here. Now we're getting another bowl, we've also got a grater in there. I love this creator and I love meals like this, but it's just not efficient time-wise. So when you're thinking about cooking, choose two vessels max. And if you want to be even quicker, then choose one. So think one pot chili, one pot pasta, sheet pan meals, or if you're going two, then go curry with rice or pasta, which has a sauce and then has a noodle component. If you have a rule for yourself to stick to two components, then you're automatically going to make your meals so much quicker. The second thing you want to do to save time is to choose some core recipes that you can interchange different ingredients for. And this means that you're not constantly looking on Pinterest, trying to find a new recipe, scrolling through Instagram and then having decision fatigue when it comes to dinner time because it's 7 p.m. and the kids are grumpy and you end up ordering pizza. So for me that looks like curry which I can add any kind of vegetable in. It's a staple that I make every single week or pasta which I make at least twice a week where any kind of vegetable like leek or mushrooms or spinach or tomato if it's tomato season, basil if it's basil season, I'm getting a lot of variety and my pastas all look really different but that it's still just pasta and I know that I can just throw anything together and it's going to taste delicious because I've made it enough times now. Another great staple is soup or some kind of salad and then a stir fry and if you have those things you've got a whole week's worth of meals and you just need to buy whatever veggies are in season and then throw them together. Number three is to set up stations that actually work with the flow of your cooking. And I have a friend who I love very dearly and when she's cooking because her compost bucket is in the pantry she doesn't throw compost in it she throws it in the sink and then has to clean it up later or if I'm there cooking with her I clean it up you know who you are but what I have found is that if I have a little container which doesn't hold as much compost as a big bucket but I have that under the sink I put it up on my bench and it means that as I'm chopping veggies all the skins go in all of the scraps go in and I'm essentially cleaning up as I cook I also chop the veggies that I'm going to be using right next to the pan that I throw them in if I don't have room then I quite often cook with my pressure cooker and I just use that as a big pan so that I can have all of my station right there ready for me you want to get out your ingredients as you go as well so that you're not going and rummaging in the cupboard for something while your onions and garlic is burning have all of the utensils that you use in drawers close to your cooking station have your spices your salt and your pepper everything there ready to go so that you can just open it up and then put whatever you want to into your meal number four is to invest in some cheap system so that's what I'd call it first one being a really good sharp knife I know this seems kind of obvious but if your knife is blunt it's not only dangerous but it's also going to waste you a ton of time because chopping things is so much slower 
I also think a big chopping board, not something really tiny and piddly, is helpful because it means that you can chop all of your veggies and you can kind of stack them up while you chop other ones, meaning that you're saving on bowls and space because you don't have to put them somewhere else. And then when, once you're ready to put them in your pan, you can just put them in th through that chopping board. I also love having my air fryer because my air fryer has just saved so much time that I would have used crisping things to go in the oven so if i want to add tofu to a curry i just chuck it in my air fryer which is close to my cooking station and then it's actually ready when my curry is ready as well when i've cooked up all my veggies and i can just throw it in last minute same with things like kumara or potatoes they're ready to go in whatever i'm making because my air fryer is so much faster than an oven i also like to have a kettle by my cooking station this means that when i'm heating uh, pasta water i can boil up water in my kettle first which means that it's much quicker to heat water i've got water right there for me to water satay which is awesome for weight loss because you're saving a lot of calories from what would typically be oil and i also have my kettle there for when i want to add water to a recipe like a soup or some kind of lentil dal or even if i just want to thin out pasta i also think that it's really cool to be able to use baking paper for baking trays because then they just really don't need a lot of cleaning and i pretty much will just put things on my baking tray take off the baking paper once I'm done, put it in the bin, and then I, I don't even really clean my baking trays if I'm honest, I just go straight back in the oven. The other one that to me is really genius is that I have my dishwashing liquid in a soap dispenser at my sink, which means that I can easily wash things as I go, and I'll, I'll get to cleaning up as we go in a minute. All these things are just obstacles removed, steps removed, less not more and a lot of people try and fix their cooking by adding gadgets they'll add mandolins they'll add fancy chopping things but the reality is the more that you add the more complexity you do as well and the more time that you're going to take so does it actually add up to be better if you could just eliminate a step altogether i go with elimination number five is to multitask as you cook and this does take a little bit of trial and error and a little bit of practice but if you've got something like onions cooking, for example, what I do is I will cook, I will chop up my onions, I have all my veggies ready to go, chop up my onions, add them to a pan. Then start chopping my other veggies that I'm gonna add first. So if it's carrots or if it's uh, potatoes, if it's kumara, anything that's a bit more starchy that takes longer to cook, I'm gonna cut that up and then I'm gonna also add that to the pan. While that's wilting down, or not wilting, but while that's cooking down, I'm gonna be cutting my softer veggies like a capsicum or mushrooms or zucchini, things that I'm gonna add in last. This means that I don't have to cut and prepare everything all at once before I even start the cooking process. It means that I'm, I'm very efficient with the time that I use. And a little tip here is that your starchy vegetables like carrots, potatoes, they all take longer to cook. So you do actually have a bit of time once you throw them in your pan to cook or cut and whatever else you're going to add to it. Number six is to buy things that are already pretty much ready to go. So think washed potatoes, frozen rice, where if you're making a rice dish, you don't even have to cook up any rice, eliminating a component, pre-made beans, minced ginger, minced garlic. Yeah, these things aren't quite as nice as the fresh version, but they're a pretty passable alternative. And this is really the only way to truly speed up co cooking is just cheat. Pre-made pasta sauce, frozen veggies where you don't even have to chop anything or use a chopping board, pre-made curry paste and pre-made spice mixes. The spice mixes is a really big thing for me because when I see a recipe that has a buttload of spices in it and it's just like ding 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 and now the recipe is this long as opposed to this long then I check out and it just gets overwhelming. It's also really hard if you're a beginner to know how to intuitively cook with a spice blend you have to really follow recipes whereas if you are just using like a taco mix that you've already bought or a curry paste then really to get it nice you just add a bit more of it so that you can throw in a little bit and then add a bit more if you want to it means that your cooking doesn't have to be as exact which is great for saving time because you're not trying to read a recipe and then directly follow it follow it you're more using them as a guideline and then throwing stuff in as you go you can't really muck it up if you use pre-made spices and mixes i also don't peel any vegetables i don't even peel pumpkin 
I just eat the skin. And so this saves me a ton of time because I'm not never, like never peeling anything. I don't peel carrots, I don't peel anything. It makes your food higher in fiber and you're not wasting as much. So give it a go. Number seven is to reuse bowls and reuse utensils. And I'm always thinking, well, how can I not bring out another utensil, not bring out another chopping board. How can I cook things together in one pot? So if I'm steaming broccoli and I want to have edamame, I'll cook edamame in the bottom in the water of the broccoli steamer. If I'm marinating tofu, I will put the tofu back into the container that I marinated it in afterwards. I'm always looking at how can I just not use an extra bowl? Because it's all time that you spend cleaning up. Number eight is to clean up as you go. This is going to save you a ton of time at the end. And it's also going to mean that you are less stressed as you cook because you have a cleaner workstation. There's a lot of things that you can do just as you're doing them that are going to save you time, like rinsing out a colander once you put in pasta or drain pasta. Because it's hot at that point. If you rinse it with hot water, then it's pretty much clean. If you use a spoon or something that you're not going to use again, Rinse it and put it straight in the dishwasher. While your pasta is cooking, multitask and clean up your bench. While your sauce is simmering, put things away. And if you have anything that's going to get harder to clean with time, like a blender, then put some hot water in it straight away. Put some detergent in, whiz it up, and even if you don't clean it and scrub it right there, have it on your bench so that you're not coming back to something that is really, really difficult to clean afterwards. I love cleaning as I go, and I'd love to hear in the comments, is this something that you do as well? It saved me so much time, and it means that I'm not creating this overwhelming mess for either myself or whoever's going to clean up later. I always see quick recipes online that have so many dishes involved in them. Like, there's no way in hell that that's actually quick when you factor in your total time, not just the time that you're cooking. Number nine is kind of an unusual one, and that is to delegate. If you're in a household with other people, then you can ask them to do simple things and have them do simple tasks that are going to make all of your systems easier. So, for example, in my family, my husband is always the one that puts on rice. And I'm going to make a quick stir fry and Nick is putting on some rice because it's just a simple job that he can do that once you know how to do it it doesn't require any additional effort or brain power so as we're getting closer to dinner time i will say to him hey nick can you please put on some rice so then all i'm doing is cooking up a stir fry if you have kids they can chop vegetables if you have teenagers in the house they can scrub potatoes what my mum used to do was we'd always buy dirty potatoes which i never do now and so we'd have to sit and scrub potatoes or we'd peel them she'd put a little movie on for us hand us an old ice cream container with a peeler and then us five kids would sit in front of that movie and peel potatoes so that she didn't have to do it and it was genius because we love watching that movie and we got to be involved in the cooking process as well i'll also ask my husband to chop some things or heat up the oven for me if you're not delegating in the kitchen and you live with someone else then this is one of the easiest ways that you can save yourself time. Number 10 is to be prepared to fail in the kitchen and be okay with that. Being quick in the kitchen is all about practice. You're not going to be fast when you first start out. I'm quick because I have done this thousands of times. I'm also quick because I've experimented and I've seen, hey, what happens if I clean up in this way here? There's a lot of just giving things a go and being okay with failing in that process and that's really the only way that we get good over time. So stop thinking that you have to get everything right and instead just get it started and give things a go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments which of these hacks you're going to start implementing and if any of them were new to you. And if you're wanting more weight loss help then I have a free mini course for you where I show you exactly how I lost the 40 pounds and now maintain it with ease. So you can go check that out in the description. And that's it from me. I will see you next week for another video. All right.